How's it going everyone? This is Astro here again, and welcome back to another Splatoon weapon analysis video. Today's video is going to be all about the Octobrush, so let's get started by taking a look at this weapon's typing, stats, and version history. So to start things off, the Octobrush is a main roller type weapon in Splatoon that was introduced in version 1.3 as free DLC. It can be purchased from the Ammo Knight store for a value of 8,500 coins once you have reached level 12. As for its stats, the Octobrush has a short range of 25, allowing the weapon to fight effectively up close, however it struggles fighting enemies that are farther away. Its ink speed and weight both have a value of 80, which will allow you to lay down your ink and move faster than most rollers. As for its splash damage, the Octobrush has a splash damage of 37, so you'll be able to splat your enemies in 3 hits. Its roll damage on the other hand is on the low side having a value of 25, meaning that you'll be able to splat your enemies in 4 hits if you try to run over them consistently, which is not very effective. Its weapon kit is similar to the Kragon Splat Roller as the Octobrush receives the Squid Beacon for its sub-weapon, which is a device that will allow you to choose exactly where you want to super jump to on the stage, and you can place up to three beacons at any position. As for its special weapon, the Octobrush receives the Kraken, which is a special that transforms you into a giant invincible squid for a specific amount of time, and you can take down unaware enemies with a vicious melee attack. So overall, the Octobrush is a unique weapon that works the best in close combat situations. And coupling it together with its weapon kit, just like the crack on Splat Roller, you'll be able to give your teammates strategic areas to jump to with the Squid Beacon, as well as hold the front lines with the Kraken. As for its version history, the Octobrush received upgrades all around. So in version 2.7, with the introduction of Special Depletion, the Octobrush was placed in the light category, which means you'll be losing as low as 40% of your special meter in the event you get splatted. As for version 2.8, when you use your swinging attack, your ink will also be painted where you are standing, which can come in handy if you find yourself accidentally stuck in enemy ink. As for the Kraken, it receives several downgrades over the game's history. It can be pushed around like a pinball when you're hit by enemy fire. The amount of turf that's needed to be inked for charging the special gauge has been increased. The time needed to continue attacking after using the Kraken has been increased as well. The hitbox has been increased to allow your enemies to push you away easier. And the knockback effect has been increased when you're hit from above or below. So, I would recommend using the Kraken more cautiously by analyzing the situation first before activating the special. And if you find yourself in a bad situation, you can use the Kraken as an escape tool instead of charging recklessly into enemy territory. Also, the Kraken's duration has been decreased, but this can be made up for if you have special duration up equipped on your gear. As for recommended abilities to use on your gear, any of the ink efficiency abilities, such as Ink Saver Main, Ink Saver Sub, or Ink Recovery Up, is recommended to retain as much ink as possible since rollers in general and the squid beacons consume a lot of ink. Damage Up can support the falloff damage of your ink flicks, and Swim Speed Up supports the Kraken as well. So with that, let's take a look at the first gear build that I have for you in this video. So this first build is a general purpose build that the Octobrush can use. So we're going to begin by selecting our headgear, which will be in the form of the Snorkel Mask or the White Headband. The Snorkel Mask uses damage up for its main ability, and it features the Forge brand, which highly favors special duration up, whereas the White Headband uses ink recovery up for its main ability, and it features the Squid Force brand, which highly favors damage up. As for our clothes, we're going to be using the Rainy Day T. It uses Ink Saver Main for its main ability, and it features the Crack On brand, which highly favors swim speed up. And finally, for our shoes, we're going to be using the Plum Casuals, 
which uses damage up for its main ability, and it features the Crack On brand, which highly favors swim speed up. So overall, this build tries to cover all the bases of the Octo Brush, as the stacks of damage up on your headgear and shoes will help with the fall off damage of the weapon, ensuring that you get that 3 hit splat as frequently as possible. The stacks of swim speed on your clothes and shoes will make your Kraken a little bit faster, as well as help you swim straight for your enemies when you're on the offensive, and reposition yourself when you're on the defensive. Your selection of headgear comes down to how you want to support the weapon kit. If you decide to use the snorkel mask, you can use the special duration up to make your Kraken last a little bit longer, whereas if you decide to use the white headband, you can combine ink recovery up with ink saver main to manage your ink after using the squid beacon. Up next, I have a stealth build for the Octo Brush to use. We'll still be using the Plum Casuals for our shoes. However, for our headgear, we can use the Stealth Goggles or the Camo Mesh. Both of them use Swim Speed Up for their main abilities. However, the Stealth Goggles features the Forge brand, which highly favors Special Duration Up, whereas the Camo Mesh features the Firefin brand, which highly favors Ink Saver Sub. As for our clothes, we can use the White Anchor T or the Anchor Sweat. Both of them feature the Squid Force brand, which highly favors Damage Up. However, for its main ability, the White Anchor T uses Ninja Squid, whereas the Anchor Sweat uses Cold Blooded. So this build will allow you to play the Assassin role and ambush your enemies to get the Splat as quietly as possible. The stacks of damage up on your clothes and shoes will help with fall off damage to maintain your 3 hit splat. Your selection of headgear, once again, will determine how you want to support the weapon kit. If you decide to use the stealth goggles, you can use the special duration up to make your Kraken last a little bit longer. If you decide to use the camo mesh, you can use the ink saver sub to retain as much ink as possible after using the squid beacon. And finally, your selection of clothes will determine how you want to achieve stealth. If you decide to use the White Anchor T, you can use Ninja Squid to completely eliminate any ripples that you leave behind while swimming on the ground. However, your swim speed will be decreased by 10%, so the stacks of swim speed on your headgear and shoes will mitigate that loss, as well as make your Kraken a little bit faster and help you reposition yourself. Also, do keep in mind that your ripples will be visible when you swim along a wall, and you will be marked by echo locators, point sensors, and haunt. So if that's a concern for you, then the Anchor Sweat is the option to go with, as Cold Blooded will give you coverage against all the tracking weapons and abilities. And lastly, I have a quick respawn build for the Octo Brush to use. Once again, we'll still be using the Plum Casuals for our shoes, However, for our headgear and clothes, we're going to be using the Squid Nordic and the Basic T. The Squid Nordic uses Comeback for its main ability, and it features the Scallop brand, which highly favors Quick Respawn, whereas the Basic T uses Quick Respawn for its main ability, and it features the Squid Force brand, which highly favors Damage Up. So this build will get you back into the fray as quickly as possible, as the stacks of Quick Respawn on your headgear and clothes will reduce the amount of respawn time when you get splatted or score a trade with your enemies. The stacks of damage up on your clothes and shoes will once again support the weapon's fall off damage and 3 hit splat. Also when you get splatted, comeback will give you all the ink efficiency abilities, all the movement abilities, and special charge up for the first 20 seconds after your respawn. So you can use the added ink efficiency to get your squid beacons back into position, you can use special charge up to rebuild your kraken, and you can stack swim speed to get back to the objective as quickly as possible. So in my opinion, these three builds should hopefully give you an idea as to how you can use this weapon effectively. So you can take your pick and feel free to modify it in a way that works best for your playstyle. But anyways everyone, that's the end of this video, so I'd like to thank you all for watching my analysis on the Octo Brush. I hope you found all of this information useful. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, as well as sound off your thoughts on this weapon in the comments section below. 
Also, if there's something that you think I forgot to mention in this presentation, feel free to include that in the comments as well. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, subscribe for more videos in the future, as well as ring the notification bell to know when I upload new videos. So until next time, this is Astro blasting off, and as always, take care, stay fresh, and I hope you all have a great day.